anymore. We All right, guys. Um, this is a video that's been requested multiple times now. Uh, so we're going to show you the uh, data login, Bluetooth data login, the actual chip that goes on the ECU and where it goes and how it goes, and then show you the TunerView app and how to set it up and all the things that it does. So uh, pretty neat. Like I said, I had a whole bunch of people asking about this and I've just, just been trying to find the right time to do it. So here you go. All right, guys. So there's the ECU. Now, something that uh, Mighty Car Mods mentioned uh, a couple nights ago in their last video, they showed their ECU out there and all the wires in the floor and they're like, we always leave these out. You always see them out there until we get the car done. And just like they said, the whole reason you do that is to make sure that everything's done. So just like the other wires that I had to get wired up here, I was able to do that um, because, you know, everything's not back in here. So I just want to make sure that was done. I knew I had that to do. If I end up getting another chip burned, I'm gonna have to install that. So if it's back up in there, you have to take it all back down. No reason for that. So here's the inside of this. And this is from Facetuned. This is where the dude I got the ECU from for the Acura. It's the same one. Uh, I've been putting his link in the description of all these videos. Um, so this is the data logging uh, pin set here. So there's four pins that come up. And those are not on the ECU from the factory. Those have to be added, okay? Which same thing as the socketed ECU here. You gotta put the socket in there. You got a couple other things that have to be added. When you chip an ECU, all of those get added at the same time. So if you buy a chipped ECU, they should be there. If you chip one yourself, then you're gonna have to add this. Now, old school, you would run this out to a serial plug and it hook into a laptop or whatnot. Uh, later, they made this run into a USB. Um, now it's going to run directly to here. This is the data logging chip and it hooks right onto this, that four pin connector. And this sends out the Bluetooth signal of exactly what this says directly to your device. So that's pretty much it. If you have a chip DCU, all you have to do is unhook the data logging wire and hook this up. So you can buy these, um, Facetune sells them, look on his eBay and you can literally just plug these in if you have a chip DCU. Um, it'll hook right up. So pretty neat. That's it for that. Once you've got that done, you can put all this back and I'll show you that. There's my normal dash that I've been using here uh, and it's been working great. Uh, so instead of messing it up for you guys, um, I want to do it on here. Uh, this is an old Android phone that uh, it's, there's nothing on it. Uh, it was actually my mother-in-law's, so now it just comes up like normal. Open it up here. Let's see here. There we go. So got it uh, normal here. I've added the Tuner View app, and I've downloaded that. And then I really uh, started playing around with it, and then decided, I, you know, I should really go ahead and make this this video. Uh, it's just easy enough to do. Um, through the phone like this. So there's uh, the one I normally like here recently on, on the new ones. So the first thing we need to do is pair it here. So path with, uh, pair with uh, Facetune tuning Bluetooth. And I'm hoping that the passwords are all four zeros. I don't remember. Let's see if it connects. Yep, there it goes. So it connected. So that's all we need there. In setting this up, um, I've already done the ignition cut and the fan that will tell me when the ignition cut happens if I'm in uh, two-step or at the top of the rev limit and this is when the fan cuts on and off which is good to know uh, the mill is the check engine light so this one on the end here I'm gonna set it up just like the other one and if you hold down on it here let me see if I can get on it the right way there we go and it says select the uh, parameter here it will show you any of these okay so whatever you've got set up, you can have it pop up. What I want to have is my VTEC. So when VTEC uh, comes on and the solenoid goes out, this is your VTEC output. So there it is. I'm going to select that. Now, as soon as the output for the VTEC comes on, it automatically shows up a light here. So it, mine's set at 4,800 RPM. It would automatically come on and you see the VTEC light come on the rest of the way. Um, my O2 is set at voltage right now. I've done this one over here the same way. Uh, this is my map sensor PSI. Those have not been set up yet to my uh, sensors, so I'll have to do that. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is fire up the car and then connect this to the ECU. All right, let's fire it up. All right, so now the car is on. So go to store, that will open up. Now this is through, and I don't really have any service here, so I'm not sure it's gonna work for us. Oh, there we go. So if you have Chrome or EC Tune, Neptune, this is what I have, K Tuner, the OBD2 ELM uh, 327, uh, Motes, Autoprom, we've got all different ones in there. And there's there's Honda if you have a Honda ECU. I bought the Neptune one, which is good for the Neptune chips or Neptune RTP. So I've got a Neptune chip right now. So, and these are fairly cheap, but you do have to, the program's free, the app is free, but you do have to buy the, um, the protocol. And once you've got that, you can log into it and it'll read whatever it's sending it. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is look at uh, each one of these. So if we go through switch layout, this will have, uh, there's a whole bunch of different ones in here that you can choose from. And uh, there's some, some neat ones in here that will will show up. And then what's cool is, uh, this just shows all white. If you go over here to set colors, now we can choose what we want the scale to be. So if we want the scale to be red, we want the progress to be, let's see here, green, and the text to be white. So yeah, that's what it'll look like. Hit save. And there we go. So now everything changes. Pretty, pretty easy. Pretty, pretty interesting to play around with. Uh, and then you can set up each one of these to what you want. Like this shows throttle position sensor here, and that's not super important to me. But if I want to change that to, let's say, engine coolant temp, which could be more useful, now I can do that. So now it's engine coolant temp. But I can also say, well, here's my high warning limit and a low warning limit. So if I go so, well, if I get over 100 degrees of temp, I want it to show red. Well, there it goes, it's 173, it automatically showed red. Obviously, that's pretty low. So, I'm gonna set it up at 200 degrees. So, there we go, save, so now it goes back green, and then it'll show up red if it gets up that high. And you can do that to each one of these, a low limit and a high limit. Now, you'll notice that all of these say mill. Those are the ones that need to be changed. So, I'm gonna flip back to the other layout here. There we go. And like I said, all, all of it's white. I haven't done anything with the colors yet. So on my setup, if I go back to setup here, it will show us uh, Bluetooth connected here. You can turn sounds on and off. Your data logging parameters is what we need to look at. So O2 and map sensor are the most important here. So if I look at the O2 sensor, Right now it's showing stock. Well, we don't have a stock sensor going to it. We have the AEM UGO, same sensor. And on the other one, I did my offset at uh, negative, let's see here, negative 0.5, done. So there's my offset. And it's probably gonna be a bit the same on this one. It shouldn't really change on that aspect. Hit back, and now I'm gonna do my map sensor. Now the map sensor is showing stock map sensor. Well, I have a Sparks Racing 3-bar, which is close enough to the OmniPower 3-bar, and that's it. Now, you can do custom map sensor information here also, but the Omni 3-bar seems to work. Now, as soon as I back out of this, now our PSI is correct and our air-fuel ratio is coming through uh, correctly also. You can see that bumping 9 to 10 and around, and it's doing the same thing on here. So this is set up ready to go it's really super easy once you get your protocol get things set up where you want it get uh you know all the different gauges and numbers set up you can change any one of these it's a really really neat app um because you can just kind of play around with it and do what you want um pretty pretty cool so yeah it's uh it's pretty awesome so you can do all kinds of cool things with it and then set it up and then as long as you've got something to set it on or whatever you can set it up here or you know like i said i've got the other one there i wonder if they'll both connect let's see 
start this one up here. I don't know if they, I bet they won't, but it's worth a shot. So now that one's starting up here. But uh, it's really super neat. There it goes. It says it's connecting. I don't know if it'll let it. No, it didn't let it because it's already connected here. But still pretty neat. I mean, that's a that's a, a neat way to do it there. And that's, like I said, that's the, the phone if we wanted to have it in there. I like having the bigger screen, but it is nice to have this other one set up now. Um, so pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, that's it. And um, hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, I can try to answer them. Um, really all pretty simple. Like I said, go to your store, get the correct protocol, do your setup, do the sensors that you have, and then play around with colors. And you can also, um, if you hit record CSV, it's now recording. You see that my fan has come on now, and because we're up to uh, over 180 now, and right now it's recording all of the information. So I can go run some pools, whatever, and come back, stop record. So now it saves that. And now I can go back to open log and it will show me, there's my file. Okay, open that up. I can hit table view and there we go. Obviously we haven't done anything, but it's telling me that here's my idle, here is my um, this is my um, RPM. This is the PSI. Okay. And we're running super rich right now. It's all nines uh, just because it's sitting here idling. Uh, normally, you'd have a nice, pretty screen of, of pretty stuff. And I can show you that on this one. I'll show you the, the last data log I took on here. Go to the table view. And the phone actually seems more powerful than this tablet because this tablet takes a second to load stuff so you can see that we've got some more colors here the red ones in the middle really don't mean anything that's just where the sensor flipped uh, but you can see that these numbers go from 9 up to about 13 in a couple places uh, but then on the high boost we're looking at 11 and 12 it's like that so not too bad and that, that was a short data log it depends on how long you run it for let's see here so uh pretty neat i think that's about it um of everything i can show you um but that's it hopefully you like this short little video